Three media organizations fined over coverage of the NSAS protest. And Nigerians are displeased at the oath of secrecy taken by members of the Judicial Panel of Inquiry here in Lagos. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladeinde. Welcome to Plots Politics. The National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, has fined Channels Television, AIT, and Arise TV 3 million naira each over their coverage of the ANSAS protest and the crisis that followed it. It referred to their coverage as unprofessional. The acting director general of the commission, Armstrong Idachaba, announced, that the sanction, announced the sanction at a press conference in Abuja. He stated that the station's offense was capable of leading to a breakdown of law and order. In reaction, the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, has given the Commission 48 hours to reverse the fine, stating that it would sue the NBC if this is not done. Joining us to discuss this is the publisher of um, CKN News, that's Chris Mwando. Good evening, Mr. Chris Mwando. Thank you very much for having me. Good to have you. And later on, we will be joined by uh, Agba Jalingo, a journalist, an activist, and you can also call him a public affairs commentator. So, CKN, let me, let me start with you. Uh, as a matter of fact, maybe I should tell people, CKN means Chris Kende Mwando, and uh, he is a publisher of that medium. So, Chris, let's look at uh, the issue at hand. You know, most times when issues like this happen, I'm talking as a media practitioner, we are always working on eggshells. We, we are always uh, looking at the whole, I mean, looking at the code, what have we done, what have we not done wrong. In this case, do you think this is the time NBC should be coming with its usual sledgehammer? Um, thank you very much once again, um, Kay. Um, the timing is wrong. The atmosphere um, is not conducive for this. And um, I just feel that rather than commending the various uh, media houses, both print and electronic, and even um, those online, um, the NBC is coming out with um, a fine uh, of this nature. This, to me, does not uh, portray progress uh, in our democratic setting. This is taking us back to 1984, uh, the days of Decree 4. And I believe that media houses should be allowed to be able to operate on him that. But that does not necessarily mean that um, there should not be any level of check and balances. Um, if there are areas where the media houses aired, yes, the necessary sanction um, should be meted out. But in this case, um, I don't see any reason for that. And even over and above that, if there are any areas where these media houses um, aired, there are still organizations governing um, these media houses. Like we have the Bond, which is the umbrella body that handles and regulates um, activities and actions of broadcast industries. Um, just like we have MPAN for the print, I believe that Bond, um, MBC as it were, that have directed um, their, uh, whatever observation they made to bond to investigate. And it's after that has been done that you can now start um, imposing sanctions. So this, to me, um, is not right. Um, and um, it, to some of us, is the way of um, just muzzling the media, which to me is not acceptable. OK, let's, let's also, for the purpose of the public, so that uh, I know this can be very tempting, but we'll try as much as possible to be objective, to look at the issues as they are before we look at what Sarah has done. Now, what exactly constitutes you know, threats to the public peace, which seems to be the, the section being you know, uh, highlighted by NBC? I don't have the details of that particular sanction. What we, what we have in the press is the fact that they've been sanctioned. But 
in, in the course of the program, I will read out that particular pre-warning that was given to media houses before this uh, extension was uh, handed down. So what exactly constitutes uh, public interest that the media is being accused of not representing? Well, it is for NBC to be explicit. They weren't explicit uh, um, in their press statement on that. But um, um, what we're able to gather is that it has to do with um, um, the footage or video footage of the shooting at, um, at Lekki uh, toll gates, which to them um, was not verified. And um, so, and there have been deniers here and there. Um, so, but if you, even if the ABC said that that is not verified, there was no shit there, according to them, if that's what they meant. The legacy state governor, um, His Excellency uh, um, Songwulu, yesterday on CNN categorically stated that the shooting was by the Nigerian army. He was very, very categorical about that. And also said that there was shooting. So, um, and the way it, the practice across the globe, um, okay, um, when those, um, so those footage is used, um, is not well verified. Most often they are not. The media houses will say, well, this footage it has not been verified by us. That happens on CNN, that happens on Al Jazeera, that happens on BBC, that happens on Sky News, that happens on uh, Force. And that happened the major um, broadcast in, um, um, uh, stations across the globe. And that is what most of these uh, broadcasts. So in the, as far as that case is concerned, they are in turn, it, 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 they, the activities is in tandem with uh, broadcasting code. So I don't know the code that um, uh, the NBC is using. Don't forget, a uh, few weeks back, the same NBC came out hard on a radio station based in Lagos, um, Nigeria Info, and um, also play starting five. So I don't think this is the right, uh, the right way to go. Because if you continue to suppress the voice, the media is the voice of the people. And when you continue to try to safe in as, um, um, try to impose sanction on those voices, then you are creating rules for rumor. You are creating room for fake news, which is what the government is also fighting against. Just today, the Minister of Information uh, Lai Mohammed, while appearing in the National Assembly, was saying that one of the greatest challenges facing the country now is fake news. So if the mainstream, you are trying to prevent the mainstream broadcasting industries from pushing out information, you will now be left with nothing but fake news through other medium, and that in itself is dangerous. And that is what we are talking okay. about. We'll bring in uh, uh, Agri Jalingo into the conversation. Then we'll be quoting some of these sections so that the people will know what exactly must have gone wrong. We are looking at the sanction hammered on three media houses during the NSATS protest. We have joining us Agba Jalingo, a journalist, an activist, and a public affairs commentator. We see how Chris Kende Mwadu, uh, the publisher of CKN News, still with us. Well, let me bring uh, Agba Jalingo into this conversation. What's your immediate reaction? Were you expecting this from NBC? And what exactly do you think uh, these media houses actually did wrong? <laughs> There's no way I would have expected that the NBC will um, attempt to gag any media organization because of the role that they played in, in the NSAS protest. I, will be very wrong if I tell you I was expecting it. So as a matter of fact, I was taken aback by the fact that even with the wonderful work that uh, some of the media organizations did, that the NBC was going to even contemplate sanctioning them. I don't want to call names of some specific organizations, but I know one of them that uh, kept, uh, that was on the story for such a time that the whole of Nigeria uh, uh, saw that station as the source of information that was happening about what was going on on the street. And it is very, very uh, unfortunate and disappointing that uh, the NBC, rather than helping Nigerians to encourage and develop this process of democracy, have joined the oppressors of this country to see how they can shut the civic space. But I want to tell you something. The truth of the matter is that um, the NBC Act itself that gave them the powers to do what they are doing has outlived 
is relevant. The, it's a decree of the military rule, Decree 38 of 1992. We do not need that law again in this country. Even if we still need it, it has to go through a lot of panel beating to be able to allow the press to do its work freely in Nigeria. Those will be my opening thoughts. Okay, that, that's a good one to start. But uh, Chris Wando, you just I, I alluded to what you mentioned, the fact that uh, this is a law that predates this democratic dispensation. So is it high time we brought this to the table to look at what, how it fits into the role of the media? It's enshrined in the Constitution, and it appears it's under threat. Yes, um, uh, men of goodwill, um, uh, this is time for them to speak out. It's not just the media. Um, after we, we start having this issue with the media, um, then other, um, other aspects will we, we come up. Don't forget we, where we are coming from and the reason for where, why we are where we are today. The issue of the agitation and protest was as a result of um, agitations on the part of Nigerians over the activity of um, um, the police. And that, when it started, people took it uh, like a child's play. Most, uh, most individuals, especially those in government, just look at, I remember that there are some um, press statements from, from Asso Rock, from the spokesperson of the president, saying that those behind the protest were Yahoo, Yahoo boys, and the rest of them. And they never took it serious. Even on the part of the security agents, especially the police, they just look at it as, oh, those um, planning to process, uh, we are miscreants. But what, what happened? As it is, we, are, we came to realize that it's not only miscreants, celebrities, and other Nigerians joined. And the aftermath is what we are, we are facing. Only that the unfortunate part of it is that uh, miscreants and loose laws were able to uh, catch on that and be able to recover. But, what I'm saying in essence is that the, the, the media is the last hope, just like they say, um, um, uh, the court. Sure. The media is the last hope of the common man, too, because that is only avenue to disseminate information that people can. So, at any given point in time, if you try to get the media stopping them from doing what they ought to do, then we run into problems. Okay. But let's, let's also remember that, as I said earlier on, that must not necessarily mean that the media should go out of its way to propagate fake news or try to state issues that are not, um, uh, that are not true. I will be last, the last person to say that we should go down. Okay. But, but as far as this issue is concerned, those the, the media in this context have behaved professionally as much as possible, both the broadcast media and even the print media and some online uh, uh, media. So. This is not a, an avenue for all the NBC okay. or the government because people see it as just government, not Chris. NBC this time around, but the government try to gag the media and that in itself is very, very dangerous okay, and it's a wrong signal. Chris, I'll come back to you because I know you shot to between uh, broadcast from your experience and that of the new media, which seems to be the biggest threat uh, uh, when it comes to uh, authenticity of stories. Let me quote some of the uh, the warning that NBC sent to all media houses uh, a week before now. And that section 133 says, broadcast technology enables the broadcaster to bring information on issues of concern to the audience with immediacy. In the event of crisis, the advantages of broadcast technologies may be used but not in a manner to aggravate the situation or adversely affect those emotionally involved. So within this uh, code now, the issue is not about facts. It's not about whether the story is true or not. But this seems to be quoting the sensitivity of the issues being reported. Now, these media houses are being accused of escalating the violence with their reportage. So, uh, 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 Agba, how do we even regulate ourselves? Let's give it that uh, probably NBC went beyond uh, its, um, this code, but let's, let's put this code within context and see how we could probably have uh, prevented the violence that happened. 
Well, um, I know that uh, the government is looking for scapegoats. They're looking for who to blame for the violence that rocked the protests. But um, let me tell you something. It's a part of the blame game. They want to blame the victim of the protest because of their failure. The NSAS protests held across the country peacefully for 14 days. I was on the street myself, like I will always do. And um, it was government in a bid and in their desperation to see how they will get the protesters, peaceful protesters off the street. They started from a Keja. I was there the first day <clears throat> when the talks came. They were I sincerely hope the network is not so bad. Uh, we're beginning to lose your audio. Agba, are you still there? I, I, I hope we get him back. Uh, Kende, can you just uh, move on from there? Yes, I'll take it from where Agba said, and I agree with him. Um, it was the government, despite the fact that they, they try as much as to deny that, that aggravated the protest, the peaceful process from being peaceful to be violent. Don't forget that at a point, some talks were sent to um, Alasa House, where most of the protesters were that be protesting for this, and they started attacking the peaceful protesters, if you remember vividly. That in itself aggravated that issue. The government, the state government came out immediately to deny that. And um, Fingers were appointed as certain individuals. And then from there, uh, okay, don't forget that there was no looting, there was no uh, violence, anything at all. That, that, that project has been very, very peaceful for days. Until the shooting at Lekki, it was that shooting at Lekki that now spiraled the whole thing out of uh, contest and people now reacted violently the next day and that is uh, and information manager well agree yes we we have a duty to the public to make sure whatever information we pass on um is the truth but don't forget that this is the uh, social media seems to have been taken have taken over from even the mainstream okay you know very well that i'm the president of guild of professional bloggers of nigeria and I know the powers therein, as far as social media is concerned, you know. And I can also tell you that there are so many unverified information going left and right and center. But the beauty of it is that the mainstream media try as well to aggregate those information and make sure that it is only the positive, the right information that is pushed to the public. And that is where they go. So that is where they become a gateway between the social media and the other sort of uh, uh, so at any given point because of the professionalism involved you cannot see any broadcast house or any newspaper or either radio or tv as well that will go around um, broadcasting fake news and the rest of them is not possible because they have so much at stake so the situation where we now try to blame the media and say that uh, it was the media let me give a good example when the burning of um, at Ojodu, at F F um, FRSC office, at VIO office was on. Is it the media that sent people to go there and burn it? But the media was reporting it live. I said, this is what is going on. When other, we had other issues uh, of such going up and down, the world police station at Oyibo, um, that of um, um, the burning of BRT buses and rest. Of it. Are you saying that the mainstream media should not report that? By reporting that you say is good is emotional, it's putting some people through emotional. What kind of emotional problem is that? Mm. Uh, if you understand what I'm trying to say, so very well. It, so it's totally out of place for NBC to start hanging on that to start. Okay. For me, as I okay. said, my, my, my this is taking us back to 1984, decree my, four, and my, that is unacceptable. That my time is really jumping. Do we have Agba now? Okay, Agba, please, I want you to jump in into the discussion. Part of the quotes that was also read out to, the, to all media houses before the sanction came is that at all times ensure that the coverage of a disaster or crisis is aimed at overall public interest, guidance, and safety. Uh, and so can you just continue from where he, 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 he stopped in terms of 
How do we ensure? Because this looks like a gag for many media houses going forward now. You were talking about scapegoating before the network went off. Wow. Okay, I, I wish there would be another time for Agba Jalingo to come in with his own intervention. So, Chris Nwando, I'm so happy that you've tested the two sides. And we have a major issue now. And that calls for the code to be reviewed. How do we bridge this information that cannot be hindered on the social media and for people to now depend on the traditional media for authenticity. Now that authentic source, it's been, you know, uh, sanctioned. So how do we come out of this? We had a review. Um, we, it's not that we don't have a review of the NBC code. That was a review recent, recently. Remember vividly. And um, then there were some uh, denials here, and especially from the board of NBC that they are, no, they were not aware of um, those review and rest of them. Don't forget that was where you had the review of fine from 500,000 to 5 million, if you remember vividly. Very well. Good. So there have been a review, but um, personally, I don't know how authentic those reviews are. Uh, I've not really taken my time to go to because since that we are disparage our information going left, right, and center, some of the board members were accusing the Minister of Information of being the one um, reviewing and the rest of them. But I think we have to have a holistic um, look at the code. And this is where Bond comes into play. It will be Bond must play a huge role in whatever we have in that co uh, code. If, because it, will, it is affecting all, all the broadcast media, both radio and television. So that code, we have to have a review so that a, the NBC should not see itself as God, quote and unquote. NBC is playing the role of NCC with the telecom companies. If you understand what I'm saying. Very well. So it is set, it's playing the role, set, play in the stock, stock market. Okay. That is the same thing. So, and so many other, there are so many regulatory agencies as far as, far as I'm concerned. So it should not see, and now it should be encouraged. Even the broadcast industries are facing serious challenges since the advent of the COVID. By doing this, you are killing the industry silently. By the kind of this, when you're not gagging people and uh, stopping people, I saw the letter they, they sent out about a week, about a week or two, two ago. When that letter came out, I had a, a, a call from the MD of one of the radio stations in the East. And he said, CK, have you seen what NBC sent out? And I thought it was a joke. You know, they sent us, oh, send us every information you have put out about NSAS, you broadcast and rest of this, and all the tape to us and rest of them. We have a huge problem on our hands. Okay. This is not where to. This is not how to go now. If we try to sanction and continue siphoning the broadcast industry or mainstream industry, we will have no choice than to leave the space for um for the social media to take, and that in itself is dangerous in itself. Beautiful. I had that just as I said earlier on. The Minister of Information today told the National Assembly that the next war that is going to be fought across the globe is going to be through social media. If you understand, you know what that means. <laughs> okay. Good. That was what he said today. Okay. So it's a big problem. So we are talking of that. Then what the mainstream that are professionals, they also want to um, start with them and try to bring them down and try to stop them from. So that in itself is that is okay. not what democracy is all about. Thank you so much, Chris. Mwandu, thank you, the publisher of CKN News, for your time and for your intervention. The advocacy continues on all our social media platforms. We can drop your comment. You can also, if you think the media is overreaching itself, you can also drop your comment on all our social media platforms. It's Plots TV Africa. You can go to our Instagram, go to our Facebook, our YouTube, and you will continue the conversation. You never can know how far your comments can go. I also want to thank um, Agba Jalingo in absentia. I know you have so much for us. You took your time to be part of this conversation. Maybe, maybe tomorrow morning we might have you to talk more on this issue. Thank you for your time. Thank you in absentia. We'll take a short break. And when we return, Nigerians express displeasure at the oath of secrecy taken by members of the Judicial Panel of Inquiry. We'll be right back. <music>